Now, one of the things that I promised you with the metric system was that we were going to be able to have very, very large and very, very small units. The way that we get very, very large and very, very small units is by having prefixes that represent very, very large and very, very small powers of 10. The system of those prefixes plus the metric units is called the SI system. Now, SI does not stand for scientific, though it's usually used in science. SI stands for System International. Words coming in that order because it was originally a French standard. So what are the SI prefixes? Here's a list of some relatively commonly used SI prefixes, as well as the corresponding powers of 10. A couple of things to be aware of in this list. You'll notice that some letters appear twice, both as capital and as lowercase. Case matters. Make sure that you're using the letter that you mean. Notice that the prefix deca has a two-letter abbreviation. And the prefix micro has this weird symbol. We write it stroke up that goes below the line, little U-shape, little tail that comes down. This is the Greek letter mu. So we read it as mu, like what the cat says. The Greek letter mu is the prefix for micro. Why is the prefix for micro a Greek letter? I really don't know. So all of these units here describe really big things or really small things. Some of these really big units, giga, mega, kilo, they might be familiar because we use them when we're talking about computers. Terra is actually becoming more and more common. I know every computer I've gotten in quite some time has had a terabyte hard drive. Now we use these in the same way that we use the everyday prefixes, but you'll notice that really, really big numbers turn up. Keeping that in mind, Working with the SI prefixes is much, much easier if we just work in scientific notation. Let's see what we mean by that. Suppose I told you that the thickness of a human hair is about 80 micrometers. That is, micrometers. And I asked you to tell me, what is that in centimeters? In order to make that conversion, I would first write that number, 80, in scientific notation. The reason that I want to do that is that it's going to make all of the arithmetic that's coming up much easier. Now I'm going to use a two-step conversion. I have 8 times 10 to the 1 micrometers over 1 times a conversion factor that's going to get rid of micrometers and bring in meters times a conversion factor that's going to get rid of meters and bring in centimeters. Now the unit with the prefix always gets the number 1 and then the base unit it's the number that the prefix represents. So micro represents 10 to the negative 6, and centi represents 10 to the negative 2. So I'll have 8 times 10 to the 1 
times 10 to the negative 6 over 10 to the negative 2. And then micrometers canceled out, meters canceled out. I'm left with just centimeters. Okay, well then let's just do arithmetic with those powers of 10. Right, 10 to the first times 10 to the negative 6 is 10 to the 1 plus negative 6. So that's 10 to the negative 5. 10 to the negative 5 over 10 to the negative 2 is 10 to the negative 5 minus negative 2. That's 10 to the negative 3. So just working out these powers of 10, this works out to 10 to the negative 3. I'm left with 8 times 10 to the negative 3 centimeters. That's a perfectly good answer. If I really, really, really wanted in decimal notation, I can do that too. I start with 8 and move the decimal 1, 2, 3 places to the left. I have 0 0.008 centimeters. Notice how the scientific notation made those decimal places really easy to keep track of. I could also have done that on my calculator. I could have said 80 times 10 to the negative 6 divided by 10 to the negative 2. And I would have gotten that same 0 0.008. Very often when we make these conversions with SI units, we end up with our answer in scientific notation. Or else we started off with our answer in scientific notation because it was a huge number. For example, Suppose we're told that the mass of the sun is about 1.989 times 10 to the 30th kilograms. And we want to say, what is that in petagrams? Right. So I think we need to check and see what the heck was peta. Peta, that was the 10 to the 15th. So... 1 peta gram is 10 to the 15th grams. So we set up our conversion factors. We're starting with 1.989 times 10 to the 30th kilo grams over 1. And then we'll have a conversion factor that will cancel out kilograms and bring in grams. And then we'll have a conversion factor that will cancel out grams and bring in peta grams. The unit with the prefix always gets 1. And then the base unit gets whatever the prefix represents. Kilo means 10 to the third. Peta means 10 to the 15th. So kilograms cancels out. Grams cancel out. I'm left with peta grams. 1.989 times 10 to the 30th times 10 to the third over 10 to the 15th. Peta grams. So let's see. 10 to the 30th times 10 to the 3rd is 10 to the 33rd, right? Adding together the exponents. 10 to the 33rd over 10 to the 15th is 10 to the 33 
minus 15, that'll be 10 to the 18th. So I'll have 1.989 times 10 to the 18th petagrams.